Then the third way, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more than natural gas and vehicles. We call them CVEs, Cigarette stands for compressed natural gas. Uh, it's, it's not a uh, uh, theoretical or hypothetical <coughs> type of uh, uh, fuel for vehicles. Um, it actually is a very simple conversion. There's virtually nothing you do to the motor to convert off natural gas. Uh, sort of one of the big hurdles, or two big hurdles we have right now are that uh, to convert a vehicle requires uh, that the conversion be EPA approved. And some of those are expensive and they were difficult to get all vehicles approved. I think that process will sort of loosen up hopefully over time. Secondly, is a chicken and egg problem. Who's going to buy a CNG vehicle if you don't have any place to go till it up, right? And who's going to put in a fueling station if you don't have any CNG vehicles to go? So there certainly is a chicken and egg. I think someone's going to have to take the lead and do this. And there are a lot of good reasons to do this. It's not a new technology. <laughs> These are great slides. I love these. This is actually, this says Cox gas trailer. This thing's full of natural gas. <laughs> um, clearly, I guess this is probably from the 20s, I'm assuming. This is a 30s. This looks like some rockets on the top of the car, but those are cylinders that get compressed natural gas. In. So, technology's been there. This is nothing new, and, and there's a lot of reasons we should be doing this. <coughs> This, this shows around the world right now, there's about 10 million natural gas vehicles. Uh, you can see other com countries are way ahead of us. <laughs> we have about 150,000 right now, and a lot of these are fleet vehicles. I know if you go to New York City or some of the larger cities, the mass transit system is very often their natural gas because of the lower emissions and small and dues and all that. So um, it can be done. Why should we do CPG? It's a real question, right? We know we can do it. It's clearly been done a long time ago, but why should we? Well, this is an interesting graph. And this just, uh, what this looks at are different fuel sources and the conversion of BTU being a very basic measurement of energy, the BTU per mile that you get from that. And I think the important thing to note is that natural gas, when we use it as a fuel to burn in a vehicle, has the most efficient conversion. These are other fuels. Why CNG? Well, um, it's cleaner and it's safer. Uh, natural gas is the cleanest burning fossil fuel available. It's, these are the comparisons to uh, uh, gasoline. It's much cleaner than gasoline. The vehicles are <coughs> much less wear and tear. Fewer oil changes. Engines last longer. Closed loop fueling system so you don't have any gas that comes out when you fill your car, you smell the gas. And safety, these tanks are much thicker than a gasoline tank, and actually there have been a lot of studies that show that they are, they are far safer than a gasoline tank if you, if you were involved in that. Why CNG? Well, there's another good reason. It costs less. Uh, everybody remembers the $4 gas like gasoline last year. And clearly, we were significantly cheaper than that. At four dollar gas, CNG was about two, so it was half. But even now, this is a recent comparison that we found, and uh, the gasoline at a dollar eighty six, CNG is at about sixty three. So, still the cheapest fuel for vehicles. In summary, why natural gas? Well, for just a host of reasons. Whether it's CNG vehicles or electrical generation or heating. Uh, uh, heating and, and energy requirements here at DBA wise it's cost effective, uh, certainly from an energy standpoint and from a cost standpoint and economic standpoint. It is the cleanest burning fossil fuel that we have. In fact, uh, you can get out on the internet and look. And there are actually um, <coughs> natural gas stoves that heat your house now that require no venting. No exterior. You can't wait in the room you're working on. You know, the product, product is a small amount of CO2 in the water. So, uh, extremely clean. 85%, um, 84% of all the gas consumed in the U.S. Uh, is produced here. It's homegrown. We're supporting local jobs. And I think this is a, even more telling. 70% of the oil that we consume here is imported from overseas. If we had taken the money that we spent on oil last year and 
sunk it back into this economy, running gas wells in the United States, we probably wouldn't get the stimulus package. That's about half a trillion dollars right there just last year. And we and, and finally, I think that we, uh, we, we clearly have the, the growth potential to meet any uh, future demand that we might see um, as far as natural gas is concerned. Uh, right here in the U.S. Thank you very much.